Hi, I'm Peter Bradley, the manager at Sheep Genetics. This short video explains the resource flock contribution as part of the Sheep Genetics subscription and fees that was introduced in June 2024. As part of the updates to the Sheep Genetics subscription and fees, we introduced a number of key changes. This include an increase to the subscription and animal charges. This is the first time that these have been increased since 2019. Other changes including, included the removal of the capped number of billable animals, meaning flocks submitting more than 2,500 animals will be billed for all billable animals received by Sheep Genetics. And there was also a change of the small stud subscription model to allow future development for Sheep Genetics. This video will go into a small amount of detail and expand further on the fourth charge there on the, chart, on the screen which is the introduction of the resource flock support charge. When discussing this charge, it's important to consider the resource flock uh, evolution over the last decade or so. Between 2012 and the recent 2024 drop progeny, the resource flock has been run as an MLA entirely levy funded project, which is contracted to the University of New England. Each year, this project AIs use at Gatenning in Western Australia and Kirby at Armidale to these 150 sires that are nominated by sheep genetics clients from across the country. These progeny are recorded for hard to measure eating quality traits, as well as other on-farm production traits, including traits like worm egg count. These are two, this has been over two iterations of this project, a primarily levy funded project. It's been a really important source of information for research and development behind the sheep genetics evaluation. The data from the MLA resource flock over this period has seen a dramatic improvement in linkage and the size of the reference population, which has ultimately enabled genomic selection for hard to measure traits such as eating quality. The benefits of the resource flock has been seen across all our sheep genetics evaluations. And it's not just limited to those that are submitting sires or nominating sires into the resource flock annually, but all flocks within in sheep genetics that utilise genomic selection, or even, even those that don't, we still see those have a flow on, effect, flow on effect through the breeding values that are displayed publicly. The key changes and why the new resource flock charge has been introduced is looking at the resource flock into the future. We've embarked on a new project which will cover the, uh, the insemination, birth and recording of progeny in 2025 and 2026. This is a key change from the existing resource flock project. As I mentioned previously, the current resource flock project, which goes up until the 2024 progeny, uh, has been levy funded. Whilst we've seen many, many, many benefits across industry, we need to look at new ways we can, uh, we can fund the important ongoing data capture. This has been enabled by the MLA donor company or MDC. This means that we can leverage these funds with funds from other places in industry. The project that captures the 2025 and 2026 progeny has been brought forward by the University of New England, who are also cash contributors to this project, led by research scientists at the Animal Genetics and Breeding Unit. The new iteration of the Resource Flock project utilises funds from MLA donor company, UNE, as well as other contributors, in, which include Murdoch University and DPIRD in Western Australia. Whilst these partners are all contributing funds, there is also additional funds required to run this project. And that is where we've seen the introduction of the sheep genetics uh, resource flock charge. So sheep genetics clients are now uh, contributing part of the cash required to run the resource flock. So this project will continue to do the good work that we've seen happen since 2012, and we'll continue to see size nominated into the project recorded for hard to measure eating quality traits and also all those progeny will be genotyped, which ultimately underpins the genomic selection um, and, and our genomic evaluations that we deliver at Sheep Genetics. So this is the core resource, new resource flock project that the Sheep Genetics resource flock charge will be applied to. It is worth noting that this charge directly relates 
to these two joinings. It is not ongoing beyond this. We are looking and, and working through options and new ways that these um, that we can continue to fund our reference populations into the future. But we do recognise it's important that we don't want it to stop for a period of time. So hence the introduction of this charge for the next two years worth of your subscription. The other key benefit to the resource block is not just measuring these traits that we've had available in the evaluation for a number of years. The animals in the 2025 and 2026 uh, cohorts from, the, from this new resource block project will also be recorded for other traits like feed intake and methane. The recording for these traits occurs outside the core resource flock um, with other additional MLA funded projects with cash contributions from the likes of UNE and New South Wales Depart uh, DPI. So these, these, it goes to highlight that the resource flock animals are a really valuable resource to not only record the traits that we have available now, but to overlay future traits of importance. So they, it, it does continue to be a really valuable resource, and that's why we needed to keep it going and have the 2025 and 2026 progeny recorded. So the key take-homes take are that the resource flock charge still applies to all sheep subscriptions within sheep genetics. It is going to occur for the next two years and it's directly linked to those 25 and 26 drop cohorts that I spoke about before. Um, this charge contributes only part of the funds required to do this recording with significant cash contributions coming from those other parties that I mentioned. The good news is that the resource flock nominations are now open from the end of August right through to the end of September 2024 for the 2025 cohort. We strongly recommend it's free to nominate um, and we recommend that all breeders nominate their next generation of sires for, to be considered for selection for the next two cohorts to get the most out of this valuable industry resource. Thank you. If anyone has any questions, please contact the Sheep Genetics office or myself directly if you have any concerns relating to this charge. Thank you.